Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camels, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guest, one of radio's favorite comedians, Judy Canova, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello. Here, here it is, the first program of the new year, and you're late. Oh, so I'm late? Yeah. Well, it's all on the count of leap year, Abbott. I was passing the corner on Hollywood and Vine, and 30 women jumped on me. 30 women at Hollywood? 30. At Hollywood and Vine? Hollywood and Vine. That's where the wolves hang out. This year, it's Wolverines. <laughs> oh, stop, stop, stop. Okay. Boy, you should see these women fight over me, Abbott. One of them grabbed my left arm, another grabbed my right arm, then one grabbed my other leg, then one grabbed the other leg, one grabbed my ears, my nose, my hair. Ah, wait a minute. But why should that make you late? Well, I had to go to Lockheed to get reassembled. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's leap year, and you've got to expect those things. Yeah, but I wasn't even safe having at Lockheed. As soon as I walked in, a dame threw her arms around me and kissed me 12 times before I could even kiss her once. She kissed you 12 times to your once? Yes, yeah, she was a riveter. <laughs> Hey, a river to kiss you? I don't believe it. Oh, you d- 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 don't. <laughs> now, 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 Costello, don't run down, Leap Year. Will you please, Lou? Listen. Maybe I can read it right. Lou, will you listen to buddy? Don't run down, Leap Year. This Who's is running an excellent, down? This is an excellent opportunity for some nice girl to propose to you. And then you can settle down and get married. Wait a minute, Abbott. Who wants to get married? I don't want no mother-in-law. What's wrong with a mother-in-law? Do you know what a mother-in-law is? Sure. A mother-in-law is the Gestapo with bloomers. <laughs> but, Costello, marriage is wonderful. Wouldn't you like to have people throw rice at you? No, when my brother got married, they threw rice at him. It's too messy. Rice isn't messy. It is when it's mixed with chop suey. <laughs> well, it. All right, talk, Sam, please. <laughs> Look, Lou, weddings are beautiful, Costello. Don't, don't you like the old-fashioned unions? No, they itch me all over. Oh. <laughs> will you cut that out? Your underwear doesn't fit our conversation. My underwear will fit anything, brother. All right. Uh, <laughs> never mind that, Costello. I still say that a wife is your best friend. Oh, no. Your mother is your best friend. And I think it's a shame when they have just one holiday for your mother and two for your father. Two holidays for your father? What are they? Father's Day and Poppy's Day. Oh. <laughs> Costello, you're talking like that because you haven't even got a girl. Oh, yes, I have, Abbott. I got a girl. I got a big book full of girls' names. All in alphabetical order. And what's the first name in the book? Zelda. Z- Zelda. <laughs> Hey, it's Ken Niles. Hello, Ken. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I just came from the blood bank. You just came from the blood bank? Look, Niles, they want plasma, not asthma. <laughs> now, now, you stop that, Costello. That Niles is so anemic that a mosquito bit him and lost blood on the deal. <laughs> oh, shut up. Ken, I'm glad you dropped in. Costello and I have been, had quite a discussion here. He's been running down marriage. Running down marriage? Mm. Why, Costello, marriage is wonderful. Look at Abbott and me. Yes, Costello, Ken and I are married. Oh, congratulations. I hope you two guys will be very happy. Uh, How do you like that, Freddy? Those two guys are married. No, no. I didn't think it was legal. Now, wait a minute. I don't mean it that way. Don't. Hey, two men Just married. a minute, please. <laughs> Now, don't be stupid. I know somebody who married a man. Look, just a... Who? My sister. Yeah, yeah, your sister. All right, never mind. <laughs> Look, let's... Come here, Lou. Let, let's take Ken Niles. Let's uh, take Ken Niles and his wife. Came from the field, didn't Look, he? just a minute, will you? Let's take Ken Niles and his wife. Oh, sure, we'll take them. We'll All right. take them. Now, uh, there's a happy married couple. That's right, bud. Why, well, I can't stand to be away from my wife for a second. When I leave the house in the morning, she goes with me. I take her to the office, to the golf club. Even when I go out with the boys, she goes with me. Now, did you hear that, Costello? Niles takes his wife every place he goes. Sure. Did you ever get a load of the puss on that dame? He'd rather take her with him than kiss her goodbye. <laughs> oh. oh, I insulted you! <laughs> I heard that remark. Oh, I heard that remark short and dumpy. You should talk about anybody's appearance. You with your double chin. I got no double chin. It's my necktie. 
Then your necktie needs a shave. <laughs> oh, darling, you're so funny. You kill me. Oh, no, no, dear. You're funny than I am. You kill me. No, honey, you kill me. Oh, no, you kill me. If there's anybody out there with a hunting license, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I want you to stop that, Costello. Come here. You understand that? I want you to stop it. Mr. and Mrs. Niles are a wonderful example of marriage. Yes, Look sir. at Ken standing there holding her hand. If he ever lets go, she'll beat his brains out. <laughs> That's not true, Costello. Our marriage has been perfect. Why, well, I'll never forget our wedding day. Oh, I look so lovely in my bridal veil. You'd even look better in a bridal. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Mrs. Niles. Please, pay no attention to him. Go ahead, tell us more about your wedding day. Oh, it was thrilling. You know, Kenneth and I had a runaway marriage. Yeah, he ran away and you ran after him. <laughs> I did not. I don't chase men. They chase me. Why, New Year's Day, I had dozens of men chasing after me. I know. You played with Washington in a Rose Bowl game. <laughs> Why, I know nothing about Washington. Not even George? Oh, well, yes, I was with him at Valley Fork. Oh, you stop that! Oh, come get us! Now, look what you did, Costello. Well, look what I did. You started the whole thing, Abbott, trying to talk me into getting married. You're not going to get me tied with any dame. Hello, Costello speaking. Mr. Costello, let me be the first to congratulate you on your decision about women. Women are nothing but trouble. I know. I've been married. I say down with women. Gee, thanks for backing me up, friend. I wish I could do some favor for you. You can. Make them let me out of here. I'm all right, I tell you. I'm all right. <laughs> you see, Costello, that proves what I said. Marriage is a wonderful institution. Oh, yeah? Look at the institution he's in. Get out of here. Hitting the beach with the first assault troops are the amphibian engineers, men trained to find and remove deadly mines under the sand. They've got what it takes, these seagoing engineers, and so has their cigarette. Camel, first with men in all the services, according to actual sales records. Both at home and overseas, more people want Camel cigarettes, and that's why your store may be sold out from time to time. But remember, Camels are worth asking for again. They always have more flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. And Camel cigarettes keep their flavor, too. They stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning, because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. Camel's tobacco standard is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. The orchestra and just one of those things. Abbott for the last time. The last time I don't want to get married. But, Costello, you're being silly. Marriage is great. And there's nothing like having a place to come home to. Why, even the president, when he came home from Cairo, arrived at the gates of the White House and whistled. And who came out? Fowler. He's always home. 
Look, let's talk sense. Now, anyway, Abbott, I'm sick and tired of talking sense. All year I get talk sense. If I get married, I'd have to give up my career. You know, I'm a beachcomber at the Union Station. A beachcomber in a, in a railroad station? Sure, I stand there and watch the waves come in. Oh. <laughs> watch the waves come in. That's about the only way you could get a girl. Is that so? You may not know it, Abbott, but Kerry, Grant, and I go 50-50 on girls. Really? Of course. He gets them under 50 and I get all those over. <laughs> come in. Oh, it's Connie Haynes. Hello, Connie. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Hello, my fat little sugar man. Mm. Mr. Costello. Yeah. This being Leap Year. I want to propose to you. Mm. I want to marry you before some beautiful actress gets you. Gee, Connie, do you think that I'm handsome? No, but they're running out of the handsome ones, and they'll be taking them from your class next. Connie, are you really in love with Costello? Yes, I am. Mr. Costello. Yes. Last night I dreamed that you took me to dinner. Dream on, girl. <laughs> then I dreamed that, that you took me to the Trocadero for dancing. Dream on, kid. And then I dreamed that you bought me the most beautiful mink coat. Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Costello, what's wrong with you? Here a lovely girl throws herself at you and you don't appreciate it. Yes, I don't drink, I don't stay out late, I don't pet. I'm a nice girl. Well, I don't drink, I don't stay out late, and I don't pet. Gee, you're a nice girl, too. Sure. <laughs> now you see what you did, Costello? You just don't know how to handle women. Listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll coach you. Let, let's suppose I'm the man and you're the woman. Yeah, but I can't be a woman. Why not? It's too late. I, well... I mean, after, I mean, after all. Why do you mean it's too late? I've been shaving since yesterday. Oh, oh, oh well... Starting Tuesday, I go out with girls myself. Uh, all right, look, look. We'll just make believe. Look, make believe you're the woman and I'm coming to your house to call on you. Now, are you ready? No, wait a minute. What kind of a woman am I, a blonde or a brunette? Look, I don't care if you're a blonde or a brunette. I, I don't even care if you're bald-headed. Oh, you men are all alike. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. Now, will you please get, get with it? Now, remember, you're the girl and I'm coming to call on you. Come now, on, here I come. I'm waiting. Will you answer the door? Will you answer the door? Oh, I'm in the kitchen talking to the ice man. <laughs> Forget the ice man. Oh, but he's a very cute ice man. I said drop the ice man. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> no, come here. We'll try it once more. Now, come on. Get with it. Now, I knock on your door. Why don't you... Why don't you answer the door? I'm playing hard to get. <laughs> Oh, this is ridiculous. I I'm getting no place with you. Come on. Oh, you're not even half trying. Look, Abbott, let's try it the other way. You be the woman. Oh, I couldn't be a woman. Why not? You've been getting by as a man for years. Uh... <laughs> All right, I'll be the woman. Now, go ahead. Come up to my door and knock. Hiya, babe. Here I am, kid. Hi. Oh, yeah. Why didn't you knock? I never knock. I'm a sailor. Oh, I... <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, oh, darling. Raise your voice, kid. I, I say, oh, darling, I, I love you. Hold me in your arms. You ain't kidding, are you? <laughs> Please, press me. Uh, press me. I'm a sailor, not a tailor. <laughs> ah, but, Weena, what is that beautiful perfume that smells so nice? Oh, that is the night in Paris. You smell pretty, too. <laughs> What order is that? That's three nights on a troop train. <laughs> Come here, Costello. Have you an idiot in your family? No. Do you want to be adopted? Oh, shut up. I'm trying to teach you something. How to get along with girls, and you don't appreciate it. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, you're just plain stupid. I know I'm stupid, but, but I didn't have a chance that the other kids had, Abbott. I had to leave school in the third grade to support my gray-haired old mother. How old were you? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. <laughs> Look, will you keep quiet? Low, come here. What I'm trying to tell you about love is I very, very day. simple. Look, what I'm trying to explain is very simple. All nature expresses it. Here, come here. Here, look out that window. Which you one? See those beautiful squirrels near that tree? You see them there, Lou? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, you do see them? Yes. 
Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Now I can see him so plain. No, no. Notice how they approach each other. They get closer and closer. Look, they're rubbing noses. See that? Oh, yeah. Well, that's all there is to it. That's all? Well, goodbye, Abbott. See you later. Where are you going? To propose to a girl? No, to catch a squirrel. Ah, oh, get out of here. Johnny Haynes sings the lovely new ballad, How Sweet You Are. How sweet you are. How sweet you are. How dear your tenderly smiling face. For a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, well, just test out a pack or two of camels in your T-zone. Our way of saying, let your taste and your throat decide. Your taste will tell you all about more flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. And it's camel cigarettes extra flavor that helps them to hold up pack after pack. Your throat will give you the last word on camel smooth extra mildness, too. And remember, camel cigarettes stay fresh. Cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-X. Camel cigarettes. They're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Hey, Costello. Somebody's at the door. Come in. I'd like to talk to Lou Costello. That's me. I come here to talk to you about marriage. Sorry, you don't appeal to me. <laughs> Quiet. Let me handle this, Lou. What's the trouble, neighbor? Well, sir, it's this way. Mr. Costello, on your way to the broadcast today, did you tip your hat to a girl on the street? Yes, sir. She said hello to me, so I tipped my hat. Well, that was my daughter, so I'm here to arrange for the wedding. <laughs> what wedding? I tipped my hat, that's all, my friend. You and my daughter, sir. She is aiming to get married. Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't aiming to marry her. I got a shotgun here. Your aim is better than mine. <laughs> Just a minute, mister. Tipping your hat to a lady is hardly a proposal of marriage. That's the law where I come from. Skunk Hollow. Oh, so you come from Skunk Hollow. Yes, sir. I live right in the hollow. Nice to have a place named after you. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't wasting any more time. Come in here, gal. Gentlemen, this year's my daughter, Judy Canova. That's the man, Pappy. The little fat one. Come into my arms, little fat man. I love you. Get away from me. Get out of here. Oh, now. Tell me, 
me you love me. Speak to me. Speak to me. I can't, kid. You're sitting on my chest. Let me up. Put up. <laughs> oh, come on into my arms. Oh, gee, this is wonderful. I wish I had this much butter. <laughs> I don't know. You got the points. <laughs> you sure ain't got any. I have now. Come on, come on. Come on here now. Let's run off and get married. Oh, no, no. You mean you want me to fly away with you? Fly? With your fuselage, you couldn't get off the runway. Hey, you should talk. Get a load of those pigtails. You look like a P-38 with teeth. That's all. That's no way to talk to Judy Canoa. Now, she's a very lovely girl. Yep, and I'll make you a perfect wife. I can cook, I can sew, and right now I'm knitting the glove. Why only one glove? What are you going to do with it? I'm going to put it on the cow to keep the milk warm. <laughs> hey, yeah, but get this dizzy dame away from me, will you? Oh, stop complaining. Beauty is only skin deep. Take away the skin and what have you got? I don't know, but I'd hate to have it for a blind date. <laughs> <laughs> See here, Judy, I don't understand why you're chasing after Costello. Don't you have a boyfriend in Skunk Hollow? Oh, sure. I got lots of boyfriends back home. As a matter of fact, they selected me as their favorite pinup girl. Really? Yep. If Pappy hadn't have chased the dogs away from that tree, I'd have been pinned up there yet. <laughs> oh, look at him. Oh, Mr. Costello, won't you marry me? Why should I? My uncle married my aunt, and my father married my mother. Yeah? So why should I marry a total stranger? <laughs> well, now, listen here. I don't care what you say. You are going to marry me. Now, I even got the ring. Oh, where'd you get it? Some millionaire passed through Skunk Holler last week and gave it to me. City fella by the name of Woolworth. Gee, that's a pretty emerald ring. Oh, that ain't no emerald. Uh, emerald's green. Wait till you wear it a while. <laughs> Look, Lou, this marriage isn't such a bad idea. Don't you want to call some girl Mrs. Costello? No, that's my mother's name. <laughs> I've heard enough of this talk. Judy, you going to stand there and let this fat boy insult you? Show them how tough you are. All right, Pa. Give me the shotgun. Judy, you just shot off six of your toes. Oh, that's all right. I got eight more left. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't marry a girl like you. You don't even wear shoes. Shucks, I never wear shoes. I just paint my feet brown and lace up my toes. <laughs> Come on, Costello, get out into that car now. We're heading for the preachers. You're going to be my husband. I'm going to be your what? You heard her, Costello. You know what a husband is. Yes, sir. A husband is what's left of a sweetheart after the nerve has been killed. <laughs> now, listen here. I tell you, I'm tired of all this here talking. Costello, you see this gun? Mm -hmm. It shoots bullets nine miles and throws rocks the rest of the way. <laughs> Get moving, you hear me? Hey, that gun barrel is cold. <laughs> oh, wrong way. Keep it off my neck, please. Hey, Abbott, do something. Will you shut up? Backwards. You're going to love being married. Now, let's go. Hey, Abbott, now, come on. You've got to get me out of this now, will you? I don't want to live on no farm. Yeah, but living at Rancho Canova is wonderful. Why, you can help me round up the cows. How can you round up cows with those bow legs? What have they got to do with it? You must have a terrible time getting your calves together. <laughs> What's the matter with my calves? <laughs> Quit arguing, Costello. Get in the car. Come on, open the door. Hey, your door fell off. Doggone it, I knew that chewing gum wouldn't hold. Some car. Don't worry, this car will get us there. Yeah, if the wind is with us, we'll make good time. Have you got enough fuel to get us to the preachers, Judy? Why, sure. This car burns very little coal. You'd be better off if you burnt soft coal, kid. Here we go. Everybody fasten your safety belt. Costello, my lover, we're going to be happy, ain't we? I said we're going to be happy, ain't we? 
Costello, I've been talking to you for the last ten miles. All you do is keep shaking your head from side to side. I can't help it. I got my nose caught in the windshield wiper. <laughs> There's the preacher's house, Judy. Stop the car. Put on your brakes. Brakes? What brakes? Bra- what what brakes? brakes? What brakes? Brakes are the things that stop the car. Oh, Pappy, put your foot out. Okay, Pappy. Get back in the car, Stumpy. I read that wrong, too. All right, let's go, Costello. A few minutes more, and you'll be a happy married man. Ah, but you've got to help me. I'm too young to get married. I'm just a baby. I still suck my thumb. You suck your thumb? Yeah, I can't reach my big toe anymore. <laughs> well, Judy gal, <laughs> I told you I'd get your husband, didn't I? Yes, you sure did, Pappy. Too bad poor old Grandpa can't be here to see it. And what happened to your Grandpa? He dropped dead. <laughs> How do you know he's dead? Did you put a mirror in front of his face? Yep, that's why he dropped dead. <laughs> All right, folks. Let's go inside and get this over with. Oh, this is going to make me the happiest girl in the South. Are you sure you're from the South? I thought Southern people had long draws. Oh, I took mine off and made my stockings look lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, honey lamb. This won't take but a minute. It ain't gonna hurt a bit. Just step right up in front of that preacher, say I do, and we'll be off on our honeymoon. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, listen, Judy. Before we get married, I want you to do a favor for me. What's that, lover? I hate to ask you, but give me a... give me a kiss. Why, sure. Here. That's it. That's all. I knew it. I knew it. The marriage is off. The marriage is off just because I kissed you? Certainly. If you kiss me, you kiss anybody. Each of the four Camel radio shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling Camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawke in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Mr. Peter Laurie. And now, here's Abbott and Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, that's about all we have time for tonight. And by the way, next week our guest will be Peter Laurie. Well, there's one thing I want to tell you right now. What's that? I'm not going to marry him. Talk. <laughs> Talk sense. Do you realize that Peter Laurie runs around with people like Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman? Hey, you, you never came face to face with a monster, did you? Oh, no. You've never been out to my ration board. Oh, get out of here. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. Judy Canova appeared through the courtesy of the makers of Colgate Tooth Powder. And remember, Camel cigarettes are packed to go around the world. Camels stay fresh, slow burning, because they're packed to go around the world. This is Ken Niles wishing you all a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole world. Mister, find out for yourself about P.A., the tobacco that stands for Pipe Appeal. Get a big red two-ounce package of Prince Albert. It holds around 50 rich-tasting, sweet-smoking pipefuls. Yes, sir, and every one is no-bite treated to give you cool, tongue-happy smoking comfort. Prince Albert's crimp cut, too, to pack and burn and draw just right. More pipes smoke Prince Albert. It's the National Joy Smoke. This is the National Broadcasting Company.